former United States Ambassador at Large for Global Women's Issues and Vandenberg Coalition Advisory Board member Kelly Eccles Curry joins me now. Ambassador, I, I just need to clarify the U.S. is at the airport, it's the outside of the airport controlled by the Taliban. You're focused on helping get women out of Afghanistan. Just uh, bring us up to date, tell us about what's going on. Oh, well, thank you, Deacon. Um, I am actually the former ambassador at large. I'm no longer in the administration. I left in January. Um, well, we are literally having to smuggle even American citizens into the airport at this point because gates are closed. It's almost impossible to get our at-risk women and girls who are literally being asked to go walk through a gauntlet of the people that they are hiding from to get to the airport and being sent messages by the State Department and by the U.S. government, come to the airport when there's no way to get into the airport. We are very fortunate to have a great network of volunteers who are working with us and using what we're just uh, an incredible network of caring and concerned people who believe that we need to fulfill our promise to these people and that we need to um, stand up and, and actually do what America does best and stand up for those who can't stand up for themselves and help them get out. But we are being obstructed and blocked at every turn by bureaucracy and bad decision making and, and just a terrible, terrible policy response mm -hmm. and terrible decision making and um, a, a, from the top levels down. Uh, Kelly, our Lucas Tomlinson um, uh, at Fox News reported, this is about 14 hours ago, that the Taliban had been stepping up the attacks. You know, there was a firefight um, at, one, at, at one gate. The Taliban had been stepping up attacks on Afghans outside the Abbey Gate at the Kabul airport, and one Afghan trying to escape said the Taliban knocked his wife's teeth out at the checkpoint. But what what are you able to do, though? Because this is really the only... It, how can you, from here, assist people boarding airplanes at this airport? What are the other avenues to get out of the country, if there are any? Well, there are very few. Um, we are pleading with countries to keep borders open that border Afghanistan and allow refugees to take refuge in those countries. But what we have been able to do, and it is, it really is amazing. It has been absolutely incredible to see, and it's not a partisan thing. Uh, I'm working with groups from across the political spectrum, um, but all voluntary, all private um, effort of former service people, people who've worked in Afghanistan, former contractors, all of these people who have connections on the ground, who have come together to really just help us create what is essentially an underground ground railroad that's not just dodging the Taliban, but also American bureaucracy. And it's, it's insane that we get these women past the Taliban and their families, um, get them past the Taliban, and then we get hung up at the gate and can't get them across the wire and in inside the airport to safety. We've had people who have been, who have gotten inside the airport and then been forced to leave because of an arbitrary 24-hour limit on the amount of time they can stay in the airport waiting to get on a flight. It is unconscionable what is going on right now. And I know that there are a number of, and I'm talking also to people inside the, um, inside the government who are working day and night to try to um, untangle this mess mm -hmm. and working their, their butts off, to be frank. And they are getting stymied by their leadership, by the lack of decision making, and by just a complete um, just mess at the top. And I have, there's no leadership and there's no intention, or to the extent there is an intention, it's really about trying to get some Americans out and then go, and then declaring victory and walking away and leaving thousands tens of thousands of the most vulnerable people on earth to the hands of the Taliban uh, that's um, that is a grave concern that is echoed um, in the Wall Street Journal editorial uh, page today where it says uh, a fair question is whether President Biden simply plans to declare victory on August 31st set asserts or lies, if you will, about everybody is out and just leaves and leaves behind 
um, American allies, Afghans who supported the United States or foreign nationals or even Americans. He could just say, everybody's out, we're out August 31st, despite that, um, you know, being in conflict with what would be happening on the ground. That is our gravest fear. I mean, one of the families that was at the North Gate right before that firefight broke out, that we were trying to mm -hmm. assist to help them find a gate that they could get to, they had an American citizen and a green card holder in that party, and then several members of their, several Afghan members of their family, two children and two elderly people. And they could not get in the gate with a U.S. passport and with the tower and ground control from JSOC telling them these people need to be let into a gate. It was unbelievable. And I, I really don't have any words. I've run out of words for synonyms for disaster mm -hmm. and, and apocalyptic when I try to describe to people who aren't following this closely what is going on. It, I've never seen anything like it. I've been working in foreign policy and national security policy in 25 years um, in Washington, and I, I've seen a lot of really stupid things happen in government. I, I will be frank, uh, by both parties. This is far exceeds anything in my imagination. And I just can't even understand a lot of the decisions that are being made. We were ready a week ago with a charter. We had a charter where we were ready to pick people up. We had a manifest of people that we knew we could get into the United States, vulnerable Afghan women and religious minorities that had some tie to the United States where we could help them get in on humanitarian parole. And the, the powers that be blocked us at every turn from being able to um, use this charter a week ago. We were ready to go. Wheels, you know, wheels up from from the place where this plane was, and it has. We just that plane that we were trying to get out mm -hmm. of um, a country in the region landed just five minutes ago in Kabul, just today. It's literally taken a week, and I. There's no excuse for this. There's just no excuse for it. Uh, this catastrophe was avoidable, and this was President Biden's. Absolutely. This this was President Biden's choice ignoring his uh, military uh, leaders, ignoring his foreign policy advisors. This was death and destruction by choice. It's what's so uh, just horrific. Uh, former Ambassador Kelly Eccles-Curry. Kelly, thank you so much for being here. Please come back.